advisory panel for freshmen from NZ as a regular content contributor of nutrition articles. So let's welcome Connie Petula. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to make sure that everybody in the back row can hear me. Yeah, good? All right, awesome. Fantastic. So thank you very much, and thank you everybody for coming. It's really great to see all of you. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I will admit, I'm an absolute uh, food geek. I'm a nutrition geek. I love nutrition. I'm very passionate about you, or about it. Well, I'm passionate about you guys, too. <laughs> Um, I want to say thank you very much for Fresh Magazine for this opportunity. Uh, it's great to be up here and also thank you very much to the Wellness Show. Uh, so this is a pantry raid. So any of you that are sitting in the audience and thought that it was a pantry raid, you might be a little disappointed. Oh, well, but here's the thing. If you thought it was a panty raid, you get up and leave. Everybody's going to know that you thought it was a panty raid. So just sit back, relax. Uh, no, this truly is a, a pantry raid. And what I'm going to do is give you some tips on how to switch up items, how to move to a more uh, healthy, holistic lifestyle. And they're very easy switches. And the cool thing is about most of the stuff on here today, it has multiple uses. So I'm going to go over that while, uh, while I'm doing the presentation. But first, just to give you a little bit of information, a lot of people ask me, what is a holistic nutritionist? How is that different than a nutritionist or a dietitian? And as a holistic nutritionist, the things that I look at is, yes, I look at what you're eating, but I also look at your overall environment. I take a look at um, what kind of uh, work environment do you work in? What's your home life like? Are those things stressful? Are they causing emotional stress or mental stress? Because all of those things play into our digestive system the moment that we are stressed. And also as a holistic nutritionist, I work with various practitioners. So I'm not like the be all and end all. I you know I, I don't think that I can you know cure everybody. I work with people like chiropractors, um, other body uh, massage type people that might assist you because again when you're stressed your digestive system is affected so if you get relaxed by a massage that can help your digestive system. I also work with natural paths and a lot of people aren't familiar with what natural paths do and so I can give them guidance as to what might differ between their mainstream doctor that they're working with and an actual natural path. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of holistic nutrition. Now, I'll give you a little bit of a background on me and then we'll get started on the pantry items. So yes, my name is Connie Petula and I am a holistic nutritionist. And about three years ago, actually while I was preparing for my bodybuilding competition, and up to that point I hadn't competed, I didn't even really lift weights very often. Uh, but I'm kind of crazy. When I get an idea in my mind of something that I want to do, I really go for it. And so I, I really wanted to see, I wanted to see what it would be like to do a bodybuilding competition. So I did the bodybuilding competition, and while I was preparing for the competition, all of a sudden one day it just, it struck me like flat in the face. I love nutrition. And at the time I was actually a business consultant for a technology company. So I was working for a software company. And I thought, okay, well this is, this is really cool. I would, actually, when I thought about it, I would love nutrition probably most of my life. So I started to do some research and spoke to a few people about it. And they said, you want to look at nutrition, and holistic nutrition is probably what you want to go for. So that's, that's what I did. I started researching the schools, and I enrolled at the Institute of Holistic Nutrition. And uh, maybe shameless plug, but they do have a booth here today. If any of you are interested in nutrition and at all interested in going down that path, I'd encourage you to go talk to them because they're absolutely wonderful people. So I enrolled in school, I quit my job as a technology consultant, and I can say that I've absolutely loved 
just so that we're clear. Not the pantry, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so a couple of things. I'm going to start off with the lemon. And I know that this isn't something that you normally keep in your pantry. You probably keep it in your fridge. But the lemon is one of my favorite items. It is so, it's multitasking. It's like amazing. So you can take the lemon, cut it in half, squeeze it, and it's a great base for a healthy salad. Mix it with any type of an oil, whether it be olive oil or avocado oil, equal parts, and you've got a healthy, delicious dressing. You've got two ingredients in your dressing. You don't have ingredients that you can't pronounce. Olive oil, lemon, very easy. You don't have a lot of other chemicals in there. The other thing that I love about lemons is, okay, so men, you can use this as well too. This just isn't for the ladies. Again, cut it in half, rub it all over your face. A couple minutes before you go into the shower, hop into the shower, and you're gonna come out looking just amazing. Beautiful, smooth, sparkly skin. So gentlemen, if you're looking for a little bit of a brightener, here you go. Most women, a lot of women already know that. The other thing that I love about lemon is, this is my deodorant. I have not worn commercial deodorant for over two years. And this is what I use. I squeeze it on a cotton pad, apply it, and away I go. And uh, it's cheap, um, it's nice and fresh. And when you think about it, you know, if you're out and about, what I do is I carry some extra cotton pads in my purse. It's pretty easy to find a lemon at any restaurant. Maybe you could walk in and say, I'm not a slice of lemon. You know, maybe a little freshener. So anyway, that's why I love lemons. They're also very alkalizing to the body. So a lot of times we look at lemons and we say, well, they're acidic. So that's gonna make my body more acidic. And no, it's not. It's the way our body processes the lemon that it actually becomes more alkalizing in our body. So it's actually very good to bring your body to a neutral state. Lemons truly are amazing. I mean, they're full of vitamin C, bioflavonoids, all those kinds of things. So one of my favorite items I must have in my pantry every day. The other thing that I absolutely have to have is my apple cider vinegar. And this apple cider vinegar has something in it called the mother. And if you're not familiar with the mother, um, it's nothing weird or gross or anything like that. What it is, is it's the fermentation. So you'll see sediment on the bottom. And that's exactly what you want to see when you're buying apple cider vinegar, is that sediment on the bottom. And what that is, is it's active enzymes. So those active enzymes, because it's a fermented product, are very healthy for our body, very healthy for our body, very healthy for our digestive system. And this is another one. Uh, it's great as a facial, so the same thing. You can rub it on your face a couple minutes before the shower, pop in. Um, and it's also great as a base for salad dressing. Equal parts with oil, and you have a delicious, healthy salad dressing. So, always have apple cider vinegar in my fridge. It's also great, you know, sometimes when you eat a little too much, and you're just kind of feeling that really full, bloated feeling, Take a teaspoon of this in a half glass of water and that will settle your stomach right down. So excellent, excellent for that. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is tahini. And not everybody knows what tahini is, but it's basically ground sesame seeds. So it's like a seed butter is what it is once it's ground. And a lot of people say to me, well I don't like the natural seed butters and nut butters because they always get the oil on top and that just annoys me. Well, what I do is when I open up a new jar, I actually stir it all up really good, and I get it all mixed up really well, and then I just put it in the fridge, and it never separates again. And uh, so I don't have that issue of the oil sitting on top. I also love tahini because, again, it makes a great dressing. Mix this with some lemon and a little bit of water to get the consistency that you want, and you have an absolutely delicious, healthy dressing. So you can see a lot of my things that I'm using are multitasking. Now, I haven't been able to have dairy for some time and I used to love the old cheese whiz on a celery stick. You know, I mean, didn't we all at one time? And uh, this is my go-to. This is what I put on a celery stick and it's absolutely delicious. I also can't have peanut butter and to me this seems to be the closest in taste to peanut butter. So I love to eat it. So now I'm going to move on to a couple of spices and I'm going to talk about salt for a second. And it's kind of funny because uh, Thursday night when I was picking up these items, there was a gentleman standing in the grocery store and he had a container of Himalayan salt in one hand and he had this container of real salt in the other hand and he's staring at them. And he's standing there for a couple of minutes and I looked at him and I said, do you need some help? Is this a little confusing to you? And he said, 
are you? And I said, I'm a nutritionist. I can help you. And he says, well, which one should I buy? And between this product, real salt, and the Himalayan salt that you can buy, from a mineral standpoint, there really isn't any difference. Now, the reason that I buy real salt and I ask my clients to buy real salt is because this is actually mined out of the um, salt beds in Utah. So when we think of Himalayan salt that actually comes all the way overseas, when we're looking at holistic things as a holistic nutritionist, also what we're looking at is the impact on the environment. So real salt is excellent. It comes out of the ground, so if you're at all concerned about contamination in the oceans, here's a really good alternative. And trust me, you're not going to see any difference in mineral content. I mean, it's, it's so slight. And I know that because I researched it. Um, my next couple of favorite items. And all these things today are, are pretty much my favorite items out of, out of my pantry. Um, organic ginger powder. And, it, and the reason I say organic, whenever you're buying spices, you want to stick to the organics. And the reason for that is because there isn't a lot of chemical process that's happened to those spices. So you're going to get all the nutrition value in your spices. And they do a process called irrigation with spices. And that irrigation process um, actually takes out a lot of the good properties in spices. So you want to go for organics. So ginger powder, the reason I love this is because it actually, um, once it's dry and ground, it actually has a sweet taste to it. So it's great to throw on like a cereal, like your breakfast porridge or something like that to, to make it taste a little bit better. My girlfriend actually told me she put it on her peanut butter sandwich the other day. And I said, that's really strange. She said, yeah, but it tasted amazing. <laughs> so uh, there you go. You know, you can put it, uh, sprinkle a little bit on your uh, on your nut butter or whatever to sweeten it up. Organic ginger as well too. Um, a lot of people think that it's gonna, you know, be spicy and make them hot, and, and it's not. Organic ginger is actually really good for turning on the fire in your digestive system, and that's exactly what we have down here. We have a fire that goes on in here, and the things that we eat can adjust that fire. So ginger's a great thing to keep that fire going, turn it from embers into a flame. The next thing that I love is cinnamon. Cinnamon just makes everything taste better. And trust me, when I was doing my bodybuilding competition, and some of the things that I had to eat while I was preparing, um, you know, when you're eating six egg whites mixed with steel cut oats, it's not the most delicious thing and you're not allowed any sugar. Cinnamon was my best friend. Um, and so cinnamon, as I say, it's, uh, it's great for making things taste better. The other thing is with cinnamon is it has properties in it that help to regulate your blood sugar. So if you're having, say, an apple, and maybe you have a bit of a blood sugar issue, sprinkle some of this on your on your apple, and it's going to make your apple taste great, and it's going to help regulate your blood sugar. Or anything, and, and I'm not saying, okay, now I can go eat something really sweet, because Connie said, as long as I put cinnamon on, my blood sugar is going to be great. All I'm saying is that everything in moderation, and I never tell my clients to, you know, you can't have this, you can't have that. Everything in moderation, but cinnamon's a great way to keep your blood sugar in regulation. All right, so the next thing, steel cut oats. Who loves steel cut oats? Oh, awesome. I'm glad to see that there's a number of people loving steel cut oats. Now, I'm not going to make you feel bad if you're still using those little packets of the instant oatmeal. Um, all I'm going to say is if you are eating those packets of instant oatmeal, you're getting virtually nothing out of them. They're really, yeah, other than sugar. Um, there's a lot of sugar in there. There's virtually no fiber. The one thing that I do recommend, and it was really actually quite funny because um, as a kid, I ate those. Most definitely I ate those. And uh, and my mom always liked, you know, the big rolled oats. And as a kid, I'm just like, Ugh, I don't like those things. And here now as an adult, I'm eating steel cut oats. And I actually had to get my mom to switch from the rolled oats to steel cut oats because she's like, oh, I don't like those. And I'm like, mom, come on, be open minded. <laughs> the tables have turned. So if you are one of those people that you like the really ground up oats, just try it gradually and even do it like bit by bit. 
and move over to the roll notes, and then eventually graduate to the steel cut notes. Now some people will say to me, it takes too long for the steel cut notes to, to cook. I don't have that kind of time in the morning. Well, here's an easy option. At night, when you're making dinner, pop your steel cut oats in a pot. You only need to boil them for five minutes. Let that pot sit out overnight. In the morning, add your milk, warm it up, and your oats are ready. So there's really not too many excuses to have a good breakfast, a good healthy breakfast ready for you in the morning. They're also great as a snack. I mean, sometimes if I have a lot left over, I'll use it as a snack in the afternoon. Add some dried fruit. Very delicious. Quinoa. I think everybody's familiar with quinoa now. And quinoa has a bit of a negative reputation as well too because, and part of the reason is, it's because of the indigenous people that actually grow quinoa. Because us in North America and other places in the world, we, you know, grab onto quinoa and everybody's eating it now like crazy. It's actually made quinoa very expensive for those indigenous people. So quinoa is something that I do keep in my cupboard for a particular reason. And, uh, you know, I guess I can look at it two ways. I mean, we are supporting them by, you know, them farming, but hopefully, you know, the quinoa is still a, a reasonable price for them to buy. But one of the reasons I love quinoa is because it only takes 15 minutes to cook. So if I take a look at a few things that I have here on the table, I could actually make myself um, something to eat pretty easily and add in some greens, say like some celery or some kale, and I've got a very delicious meal. So 15 minutes, I'll actually eat quinoa for breakfast sometimes. If I forget to do my oats and they're done in 15 minutes, I'm doing something else and add some almond milk to it, add some cinnamon, absolutely delicious and nutritious. It's also very high in protein and it's what we call a complete protein, meaning it has all of the essential amino acids that our body needs to keep us healthy. Moving on, coconut oil. Everybody's, I'm sure, heard of coconut oil. This is another one of those great multitaskers. Um, it's great on your skin. It's great as an eye makeup remover. Um, if anybody's done oil pulling or if you're familiar with oil pulling, it's great to do that. Um, and if you haven't heard of oil pulling, go onto the internet and research it. Uh, but it is kind of a fun thing to do. Um, and honestly, when I started doing this and doing the oil pulling, I don't have any dental issues. I don't have any sensitivity in my teeth any longer. So I, I encourage you to research it. It's excellent. But coconut oil is one of the things that as holistic 
had our catch-up obsession at one time. So one of the things that I started doing a long time ago was using tomato paste. And the reason that I use tomato paste, and I don't buy tomato sauce anymore either, I always buy tomato paste. And what I do is I dilute this. So you dilute it to the thickness that you want. And this is a great substitute for ketchup. Even if you want to sweeten it a little bit, add in some maple syrup, or add in a bit of you know, coconut sugar or whatever, it's still a healthier alternative than your actual ketchup. Because unfortunately, ketchup has become so processed and they use so many things to it's just not a good option. So tomato paste is great. And like I say, when you're looking for recipe, when you're looking at recipes and they're recommending tomato sauce, buy this, dilute it, no salt, you add what you want. So you control more that way. Another option for moving away from ketchup is salsa. Salsa is great. Now the one thing that I do tell people, so most of these items, I think up to this point that I've talked about, they're all one ingredient. And what I tell people is when they're looking at products, read the labels. And I don't mean to read the labels for calories because as a holistic nutritionist, that is not something that I do. I do not count calories with my clients. But what I do tell them to look for is look at the list of ingredients. If the ingredients are on the list are things that you don't know what they are, you're not sure how to say them, or you look at them and you go, I kind of know those names, but I'm not sure what it exactly does. Put it back, put it back on the shelf, find another alternative. Um, that is that is going to be the best option for your body. I really like Mrs. Renfro's. They have a number of different flavors. Uh, it's just, it's really delicious. And once you move over to this, you'll never go back to ketchup. Applesauce. Applesauce is another one of my favorites because it's so functional. I can use applesauce actually if I want to make, um, I have a lot of friends that are vegan, so if I want to make something that's vegan, I will use applesauce as my egg replacer. I'll also, I use this actually in um, meatloaf. So for a period of time, as I mentioned to you, I couldn't um, eat certain foods just because they were bothering my body. Tomatoes, unfortunately, that was a heartbreaker for me to have to remove tomatoes and not be able to use tomato sauce and stuff in some of my recipes. So what I did one day is I thought, let's see how the apple sauce works in that meatloaf recipe. And it was perfect. It just added a nice amount of sweetness. I didn't need an egg or anything. Um, another little tip on quinoa, sometimes you'll see quinoa flakes. So if you need to thicken something up like a meatloaf, if you're switching things up because of food allergies, uh, the quinoa flakes are great for thick thickening, uh, thickening things up. So the applesauce is great. You can actually, um, I recently made a, a cake, had no eggs, it had absolutely no sugar. And I mean literally no sugar. It didn't have maple syrup or anything else. It didn't even have any dry fruits in it. And I just sweetened it with applesauce. And the people that I gave it to, they were surprised. They didn't even realize it didn't have sugar in it. All right, now let's move on to the indulgences for a little bit. Um, cacao powder. Now a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between cacao powder and cocoa powder? And the biggest difference between the two is cacao powder is less processed. It's processed at a lot lower temperature. So cacao powder actually has more of the fat in it still. It still has more of the cocoa butter content in it. Once you move into cocoa, now you're starting to get a product that has been heated up to a higher temperature to remove some of that fat from it. Is one more nutritious than the other? Well, when we look at something that is more raw or processed at a lower temperature, yes, it has more nutrition. Does cocoa still have a lot of nutrition in it? Yes. Actually, cacao is the highest, one of the highest antioxidant foods. So you're getting a lot of good stuff in here. It's also highest in magnesium. So if you're a little stressed out, go for your cacao powder. Now, the one thing that I would recommend, and I think most of us probably grew up with fries, cocoa, and what I was actually really surprised one day when I looked at the label, when I became more of a label reader, that fries cocoa actually contains milk. So if you have a dairy allergy or if you're sensitive to dairy and you're pulling out your beloved cocoa and it's giving you a stomach upset, that could be why, because there might be some milk in it that's bothering you. So check out cacao. It's great in smoothies. Um, anybody that actually has brown hair and they don't want 
a lot about uh, utilizing coconut sugar to keep your blood sugar in balance. And for some people that works, for some people it doesn't, but it definitely does have a lower glycemic effect. And what, what I mean when I talk about glycemic effect is that spike on your blood sugar. So coconut sugar is awesome. Uh, please, if you are using white sugar, switch it out. It's just, it's not healthy. And I've actually been through a, a sugar plant. I've seen that process and I've seen what they do to the sugar. I've seen how those sugar beans come in. It's just, it's not a good process. So, uh, coconut sugar is a really good option. You can switch it one for one. It's a little brown, so it does have a little bit of a brown sugar taste to it, which everybody likes brown sugar. Now, another thing is we can talk about the protein powder first and then I'll talk about these things. So, protein powder, most of us like to, you know, do the morning smoothie or do an afternoon smoothie and, uh, you know, help us fill ourselves up. Again, this is another really important area where you need to read the labels. A lot of protein powders, and I'm sorry, if you're going to Costco and you're buying one of those big containers of protein powder, there's not a lot of good stuff in there. You're probably hurting your body more than anything. So this is a protein powder that I use. I recommend it to my clients, and it's actually a local company based out of the Okanagan. And if you look at the ingredients on the label, uh, it's raw, it's gluten-free, it's vegan, but these are all whole food ingredients. So this is the garden variety, so the vegetables. But it has really good items in here. So there's brown flax in here. It's, the base is actually pumpkin protein, which is a very good healthy protein. So um, I would encourage you to look for Power Plant. Yes. The name, it's called Power Plant. Yeah. And actually, if, if you came in late, there's actually going to be a draw at the end. So we'll have a period of time for questions, and there's going to be a draw. Somebody is going to win all these things to stock their pantry. All right, so now we go into the fun things, because everybody has to have a little bit of fun. Who eats Nutella? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but I would encourage you, Power Plant has two excellent spreads. One is a coconut chocolate spread and the other is just a straight chocolate spread. And trust me, you take one bite of this stuff, you will not go back to Nutella. It is healthy, delicious, again, it's raw, it's vegan, all really good ingredients in here. So I would really encourage you to uh, search out the Power Plant product. Um, these are dangerous for me <laughs> because I can literally sit there with a spoon and just enjoy them. I don't need any bread or anything else. I haven't tried them on celery. I'd have to do that. Um, when it comes to energy bars, health bars, protein bars, whatever you want to call them, again, please look at your labels. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize when they're looking at energy bars is their sugar alcohols in the bars, those are very hard on your stomach. So if you've ever eaten any type of a, a protein bar or a health bar or an energy bar and after a while you've got that upset stomach or really gassy stomach, it's probably from the sugar alcohols that are in the bar. And power plant, and I know that I'm talking a bit here about power plant, but I believe in supporting local wherever I can, and they do. They have an excellent product, and as a nutritionist, this is something I recommend to my clients. So if you look at the label, you're looking at really healthy ingredients with this bar, and they are, again, they're absolutely delicious. Sometimes I'll eat them as a dessert. And the last item on the list here, and then I'm going to talk about one more thing and then we'll do the question and answer, zipped. Um, when I want just a pure chocolate bar, this is the bar that I go for. And again, it's a local company. Uh, the young lady that runs it, she's absolutely amazing that she's uh, right into uh, the, the people that she works with, the producers of the chocolate, and it's all fair trade. These are amazing bars. She makes double coconut macaroons or double chocolate coconut macaroons. And uh, a lot of people say to me, well, you know, a bar like that is very expensive. I don't want to spend that kind of money. And uh, it's really interesting, actually, and it's actually, I'm actually really sad that I just found out about this this year. But when you're looking at chocolate and you're looking at chocolate bars, the ones 
what I would recommend is actually what I do is I will make up a broth, whether it be a, a beef broth or a chicken broth or even a vegetable broth. I cook that up and I pour it into ice cube trays. And then I pop those ice cube trays into a Ziploc bag, put it in my freezer, and then I just pull a couple of those out, toss that in the pan, and then I saute my vegetables right into the broth. It works quite well.